Thank you for the singing. Please be seated. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 27. And we continue to talk about the nature of speaking in tongues. And uh, this morning we talk about the, some of the truth of tongues. The, the first concept is that the tongues, biblical tongues, always and uh, uh, from the book of Acts till the, the, the first Corinthians, is always the real human language. And therefore, uh, today's practice uh, in the modern church uh, with the different kinds of uh, uh, unknown tongues and the sounds, that is not biblical tongues. And they may have this experience. But yet this is not biblical tongues. And sometimes you cannot take away that subjective experience. But we have to objectively to say this is not biblical tongues. And, and most of the charismatic people are going to argue with you that no matter how hard you say, and uh, even though I know you're telling the truth, but I have the experience. Uh, well, so we need to we need to share with them. We are not questioned about your experience. You, you may have that subjective experience. And speak that the that sounds and, and the the uh, the uh, altar from the, the mouth and the uh, tongues with that kind of sounds. And that may be very exciting. And, and you do have that experience. Yet we have to show this is not biblical tongues. Because biblical tongues is always human language. And also, secondly, biblical tongues is always sovereign given miraculous supernatural gifts. And so you cannot learn. And you cannot teach. You, you just uh, receive uh, from the will of God and through the arbitrary will of the Holy Spirit. And so we cannot pretend that we have this kind of gift unless there's a supernatural miraculous gift. And God will not uh, make confuse. And, and if you don't have any uh, foreign language uh, ability and all of a sudden you speak a foreign language, that is uh, miracles. And so any, any so-called tongues and also voice that can be taught or can be learned that is not biblical tongues. And thirdly, we mentioned this morning that uh, uh, biblical tongue, tongue speaking was a sign to the nation Israel. So the design and originally is not for the practice in the church. Originally is actually assigned to the Jews. And the problem is the Corinthian people abuse it. And so they use this kind of gifts in the church and then trying to show off and exhibit, exhibit themselves. 
把自己给显明出来，他们想要夸自己有多好多大。And, and so this in the beginning that they、uh, that when they practice in the church service, that is already wrong. 所以从一开始他们在教会里面的操练就是错误的。And except、uh, especially when they speak in tongues, they never ever interpret before. 尤其是他们在教会里面说方言的时候，没有人翻译出来。And so they just speak and then cause everybody to confuse. 所以他们就讲一堆，然后呢，搞得特别混乱。And so we said that is wrong. 所以我们就说这是错的。And then Paul also mentioned biblical tongues were not assigned to the believers. 还有保罗也提到。呃，说方言不是对信徒来说做一个记号。And the people in the、uh, act, the book of Acts, they were saved not because they hear the tongues. 在使使徒行传有犹太人得救，不是因为他们听到了说方言。They they were saved is because they hear the prophesying, they hear the preaching of the word. 他们得救是因为他们听到了预言，他们听到了。Uh, so when you look at the scripture, then you you find out no matter how、uh, how many scripture you find, they never ever have one verse talking about they hear the tongue and got saved. So, 我无论我们在圣经里面找呃看多少经文。Uh, But we we saw that they、uh, they are saved because they they hear the word of God and they they were convicted、uh, in their hearts and they submit and surrender their life、uh, to 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 the Lord Jesus Christ and they are saved. We see that they are saved because they heard the word of God, so they are willing to surrender their life to God and they are saved. And also,、uh, this, is and also uh, this is not for the believer. And we we have to realize that the charismatic have a wrong concept to think that this is a sign of a、uh, feeling of the Holy Spirit. 而且哥林多教会也误解，他们相信，他们以为说方言是啊、uh, 圣灵的充满的一个证据。And they also think this is a sign of a power. 他们也认为这是圣灵的呃、uh, 能量的一个证据。And they think this is the sign of a、uh, God's blessing. 他们也认为这是。And yet, Paul said this is not for the believer. But Paul Paul said this is not for the believer. So all the con, uh, uh, teaching of the、uh, charismatic about the tongue to the believer are totally wrong and against from the scripture. So the Corinthian church's tongue is wrong because their tongue is for the believer. And then many people who are not believers are talking about the tongue to the believer. And then many people who are not believers are talking about the tongue to the believer. And then many people who are not believers are talking about the tongue to the That the biblical tongue is、uh, talked directly to God, but never to man. Today, 早上我们提到圣经里面的方言是对神说的，不是对人说的。And so, when it like said that if I have the、uh, the gift of tongues, 所以比如说假假如说我有说方言的恩赐。And so when when I speak tongues, 那我操练的时候 ，and all the content of the speaking in tongue is is towards God. It is not towards man. And so when you hear some people said、uh, speak in tongues and then、uh, he himself interpreted. So if you hear a person say he speaks in tongues and then he himself interprets it, and then you hear a person say he speaks in tongues and then And then you know that's for fake. 如果他翻译，如果他呃，他翻译的说，我刚刚说的，我刚刚说的是，呃，小子们呐、啊，我已经爱过你们了，你们要听从我。如果他是这样子对人说的话，那他的他的方言就不是从圣经来的。So you can detect whether that's from the Lord or not. 所以我们就能看到这是不是否是从神来的。Because when When those uh, uh, disciple, when they speak in tongues, because those, uh, uh, disciples, they speak in tongues, and they are expressing the work, the wonderful works of God. They are in, uh, praising God's wonderful works. And they praise God for His wonderful work. They are praising God for His wonderful work. And yet, never talking to people. But they have never spoken to people. And so, when when you、uh, understand the content of the uh, uh, content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then you understand that today is the source of so many problems. So, when you understand the content of the tongues, then
And so, uh, many times in the scripture, and when Paul talked about Tom, he said, uh, if, if, you, if you don't have an interpreter in the uh, congregation, then speak to, to yourself and to God. And, and never, never said that you speak to others. And so that shows a very clear concept to, to uh, uh, that the, uh, the, the show the very uh, uh, clear concept that the, the practice of the modern uh, charismatic church are doing the wrong thing. Uh, when they are speaking to people. So And then uh, this evening I would like to start the number six. Number six, biblical tongues were accompanied by the miraculous gifts of interpretation. Now you have to realize this is a very important qualification for the people who really want to speak in tongues in the church. It is a supernatural gift uh, when you are speaking tongues. But originally, uh, the speaking tongue is not designed in the worship service. However, uh, Corinthian church came and then they have those kind of gifts and then they start speaking in tongues in the in the church and the worship service. And not only they speak in tongues in the church, and then they dominate the whole church. And they, they actually dominate the whole service. And nobody else uh, can come in except they speak in tongues. And so the whole domination and the whole service is full of tongue speaking. Remember, originally, it is not designed in the worship service. But when Corinthian church practiced uh, speaking in tongues, they abused the tongues. And people who do not understand tongues they don't understand what's happening. And they are confused. And they, they, they have no uh, understanding of the word. And therefore, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, practice of the tongue speaking cannot edify the church. And every time they speak in tongue, people are not being edified. And so Paul said, unless, when you speak in tongue, unless it being interpreted, you are supposed to be silent. So, so at this moment, when they abuse the tongue speaking, Paul actually give them an order because uh, they, they don't, uh, the, Paul doesn't want them to continue to confuse the people and then uh, to, uh, to cause the loss of the church. So uh so if, if you want to speak in tongues, you first need to detect there's a gift of interpreted uh, in order you'll be able to speak. If this if there's no uh, gifts of interpretation, then even though you have this gift, you need to be silent. And uh, if you have somebody who knows the language, you still cannot speak. 
because that particular person needs to have this supernatural gifts of interpretation. For example, and we have some Russian friends. And we don't know Russian. All of a sudden, we start, uh, start speaking Russian. And but yet, there's nobody who has this supernatural gift of interpretation. We still cannot say it. But you say, well, hey, but somebody understand Russian? Well, they understand Russian, it doesn't mean they're qualified to interpret it with this uh, supernatural gift of interpretation. <laughs> so you need to be very careful to see what Paul uh, is trying to, to uh, limit the speaking tongue. So, so it's not just you understand the language, then you can speak. You must have the gift of interpretation in order to speak tongues in the congregation. Some people know how to interpret. For example, Caleb knows how to interpret uh, both uh, English and the Chinese. But it doesn't mean that he has a gift of interpretation. Because the gift of interpretation means that the, he, he never learned how to interpret. And he never know the language uh, the, and learned the language before. And so when somebody speak in tongues in the foreign language, and the Lord gave that person with the gift of interpretation. And so this person have a speak in tongues uh, gifts. And the other one who have the supernatural gift of his interpretation. And they never learned this language. And he speaks this language he never learned. And he interprets this language he never learned. And people understand. This is a miracle. If you have a guy who knows the language, and he learned this language, and then you have another guy who learns this language and they know how to interpret it, this is not a miracle. This is a fake. This can be pretend. And God doesn't want this confusion. So, when God performs miracles, people know this is a miracle. It's not going to be confused. So if there's no, uh, uh, no one who knows who has this uh, gift of interpretation, no matter how many people who own this gift of uh, speaking tongues, they cannot they cannot arrogate it to speak in tongues. Because if they speak in tongues, they actually uh, go over their boundary and they have sinned against God because God said no. And so they have sinned against God. Okay, let's, uh, let's say that they, they do have the biblical tongue. And they do have uh, this uh, supernatural gift from the Lord and speak another foreign language. But if there's no uh, inter, uh, supernatural gifts of interpretation. Then they need to be silent. They need to be, be quiet. Now, if they speak, 
without interpretation, then they have sinned against God. Now we're going to talk more detail when we talk uh, about that verse uh, later on. Uh, and we're going to uh, be more detailed to tell what kind of a uh, interpretation, what kind of a situation that the, uh, a person will be able to speak in tongues. However, you want to be uh, you want to be useful in speaking tongues, then you need to interpret it so that the, all the people understand. And so that the, it can be edified to the church. Now, you say, but the content is not for the believer. But when the, the content is praising to God directly, and so when they interpret it, and those content uh, of praising God directly will be definitely edified the believer. But it's originally it's not for the for the believer. Originally is that they they praise God directly. Uh but when when the content being interpreted, then we all uh, feel uh, I mean uh, the same concept to to say this is wonderful. I mean, we praise God and and we 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 can also say, Amen and Amen. Now, we are Amen. And then number seven, biblical tongues were bound by apostolate apostolic direction. Now, what does that mean? That means uh, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, set up a certain kind of a rules. And when you speak in tongue in the church, you have to follow those rules. If you don't follow those rules, then number one, you should not speak. If you insist to speak, then you violate God's will. And you violate God's uh, rules. So let, let's let uh, see what is the direction that the, uh, the Bible records. Uh, David Clouds lists seven of them. David Cloud and first of all is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 27. Towns are to be spoken only by course, one by one. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, in this particular concept, you have to realize that, that you can only uh, have two or three, the, ma the, the maximum is three, and then speak by course in turn. One after another. And you cannot speak all at the same time. And you cannot uh, uh, start everybody and everybody is trying to, uh, to uh, yell and shout and, and, uh, and see whose voice is bigger than others. So 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 27 says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret it. So uh, so, when they speak in tongues, they cannot speak together. They need to at least two or three in one service. 
一次聚会里面最多只能有两三个人。And the maximum three. 最多三个人。But these three, they need to in turn speak one and then another one, another one, and they cannot speak together. 但是这三个人必须得一个一个说，不能同时的说。Not only that. 不只是这个。Somebody need to interpret for them. Now we are going to talk about more details uh, later. But Paul said, "Let one interpret." If nobody interpreted, then uh, nobody can speak. So that is the rule. So this is the rule. And it is from the Bible. From the Bible. It's God's inspired word of God. It's God's inspired word of God. It's God's inspired word of God. 呃，亲自所写的。<笑> and you cannot violate that. 呃，而且我们不能违反。If if you violate that, I don't know. I don't know what can you justify. 如果你违反圣经里面所说的话，我不知道你是怎么能辩论。And 呃，来辩论自己。You have violated God's word. 因为你呃违反了神的话。And you have no interpretation. And you interpreted, and you still continue insist to speak in tongue. Then you are sinning against. Against God. Because you have no translator, but you still continue to speak in tongues. This is sinning against God. And then number three, there's、uh, there's to be no confusion or lack of peace. Third point, uh, there cannot be confusion. There must be peace. If you are in the church, so First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse thirty-three says, "For God is not the author of confusion, but is everywhere." So First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse thirty-three says, "For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints." 呃呃，哥林多前书第十四章第三十三节说，呃，因为神不是叫人混乱混乱，乃是叫人安静。And so if if any uh particular uh gifts cause confusion, then that gift need to be uh to be controlled. 所以如果有任何一个恩赐在在教会里面造成混乱的话，那这个恩赐必须得被呃限制。And so Paul is very clear that the no confusion. So Paul says, "Cannot be confusion." So follow the order. 按照顺序来。And if no, uh, if if you are not uh, uh, speaking in in turn or by course, then don't speak. 而且如果你不能一个一个说的话，那就最好别说。And then if there's no interpreter, don't speak. 而且如果没有翻译的人的话，那就更不能说。If you cause confusion, 如果你造成混乱的话 ，don't speak. 不能说。And so that's the concept. So this is the concept. And number four,、uh, this may cause some、uh, difficulties. Uh, and then the fourth point, this may cause some difficulties. Paul in First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse thirty-four says, "Women are not allowed to speak in tongues in the church." Paul in the Second Corinthians chapter fourteen verse thirty-four says, "Women are not allowed." Now please understand, I have, I have nothing to do with that verse. Uh, okay. 请请记住，我跟这个经文没有关系。Don't don't hate me. 请别要恨我。But that's what Paul said. 但是这是保罗所说的。Paul said women are supposed are not supposed to speak in tongues in the church. 保罗说，呃，女的不能在教会里面说方言。So, verse fourteen, uh, chapter fourteen, verse thirty-four says, "Let your women." Keep silence in the church. Uh, Paul in the third verse says, "Women in the church must be silent." For it is not、uh, permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also says the law. Uh, in the middle of the church, like the church of Christ. 因为不准他们说话，他们重要顺服，正如律法所说的。Now you, you may say, what, what kind of the age that we are in, and you still follow Paul's old time and the old fashion? 你有可能说，哎，我们已经这个时代了，你还跟着保罗他的旧的这种方式 ？Well,、uh, there's never ever another verse to、uh, to stop this verse. 那我们看圣经的时候，没有另外一个经文。Uh, and therefore, we have to obey even today. So we, today, also, must follow. 
So that means, now it doesn't mean that the women cannot serve in the church. But the limitation is women are not supposed to speak in tongues in the church. It doesn't mean that they, they cannot have the gifts. But it really means that they are not supposed to speak in the church. And number five, those who are truly spiritual will acknowledge that Paul's teaching is true. So verse 37, chapter 14, Paul said, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Uh, 37节说, 呃, so it is commandments of the Lord. So we can see Paul understand that when he wrote all this, somebody is going to fight against him. And somebody is going to object him. And so he being inspired by the Holy Spirit and write this portion of scripture says, listen, don't argue with me, don't oppose me, because this is the commands of the Lord. And so we have to follow this order. If we don't follow, and we are violate the commandments of the Lord. And this is a this is a serious, I mean a serious as violate the Ten Commandments. 这个跟, uh, uh, and because this is the commandments of the Lord. And so you and I are not supposed to argue. And you and I are supposed to obey and accept this is a true and then exercise in the church. And then number six. Everything is to be decent. Uh, uh, and you, you, you have to be very decent and no confuse. And then, uh, number seven, everything is to be orderly. So, uh, chapter 14, verse 40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. So you see, uh, we have to follow the order. No confusion. And originally that the, we have seen that the many commentator, uh, commentators uh, said that the original church, they just uh, sit together when the time comes, they just somebody just, just uh, stand up to uh, speak in tongues, to give a song and uh, a prayer. And so uh, they, they are very loosened. There's no, kind, uh, no such an order uh, that in the early church. So, uh, and However, if everybody is being led by the Holy Spirit, well, that may be a very profound and may, may be a very spiritual meeting. However, if, if you have a, a people led by the flesh, and, and when people gather together, they start uh, showing off their gifts, 
and they speak in tongues and tongues and tongues never stop. And then the, the, the meeting continued to uh, be prolonged. And it caused all kinds of difficulties and problems. So when Paul hear about those kind of a confusion, and they abuse the tongues, and women in the church and then trying to compete with the men. And, and, and all kinds of chaotic situations happen. So uh, Paul came, inspired the Holy Spirit, and then uh, set up all those rules. And then he commanded. From now on, the church needs to do it orderly and decently. Now, in our church setting, and we have definitely arranged uh, as many as people to be involved as possible. So some pray, some leading the songs, and some uh, give the special number, and some give the challenge, and some preach, and, and we have uh, combined as many as uh, uh, brothers and sisters to be involved in the church uh, ministry. And but yet we have to have the order. Because we cannot do it uh, in the early time. So that uh, waiting for people to have the uh, to the to have the feeling and then stand up and to say. We have to prepare earlier and then set up an order before the church starts. So everybody follow the order and we do it decently and in order. And that is the uh, direction of apostle. And number uh, eight. And uh, let me quickly uh, turn to number eight. Number eight, biblical tongues were not spoken by all quest, uh, Christians even in the first century. Today, charismatic movement and the church emphasize everybody need to speak Tongues. Well, again, only that particular concept, then we can prove the, uh, the, uh, the charismatic uh, movement is wrong. Because they emphasize everybody speaking tongues. But when you look at the, uh, the teaching of the Paul, Paul, he never said that everybody needs to speak in tongues. He said that not everybody speaks in tongues. Not everybody interpreted. Because in the body of Christ, uh, not everybody is eyes and not everybody is ear some is ear some is eyes some is hands some is, hand, some is uh, feet so not everybody supposed to force them to speak in tongues so not only from the teaching of the Paul of Paul and also uh, the the historical of facts, we see that tongue speaking is uh, to, for all, everybody to speak in tongue is a false teaching. So, from Paul's teaching and from history, we see that tongue speaking is a false teaching. Church history teaches not everybody speak in tongue in the first century. Church history tells us that not everybody speak in tongue in the first century. Church history tells us that not everybody speak in tongue in the first century. Church history tells us that not everybody speak in tongue in the first century. Church history tells us that not everybody speak in tongue in the first century. 
And, and so Paul say, uh, is everybody speaking tongues? No, that's not the case. And we only choose one book, then we can prove that not everybody speak in tongues. The church history starts with the book of Acts. Uh, and you can study, uh, study the, the book of Acts and then you, you, you find all those evidence then you find out that not everybody speak in tongues. Acts chapter 2 uh, When those people, those Jews uh, they hear the tongue speaking and later on they hear the prophesying of Peter and they got converted to Christianity no record to say that when they uh, trust the Lord they speak in tongues Acts chapter 4 verse 4 and chapter 6 verse 7 talking about those people who got saved and adding in the church no record to show that they speak in tongues Acts chapter 8 verse 35 to 39 Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopian. Ethiopian. He got saved. And no record to say that he speak in tongues. And then Acts chapter 11. And the, the first believer in Antioch. No record to say that they speak in tongues. And Acts chapter 16, Lydia and his own household, uh, her whole, uh, household, all got saved. Lydia. Lydia. Yeah. They did not speak in tongues. And also, the same chapter that the, that jailer and his whole household got saved and no record they say that after they saved they speak in tongues. Now I can continue. But, but there's a full of all the evidence in the book of Acts to tell people and to show us that not everybody got saved and then speak in tongues. Now, if, if you insist you have to speak in tongues in order to, to get saved, and then, then the Bible is wrong. Well, if the Bible is true, and you emphasize everybody needs to speak in tongues, then you are the wrong. And then you are actually violate the Bible, uh, the scripture. So we see that the, from the history and also from the scripture, there's no evidence to prove that the you, you can emphasize that all Christians has have to speak in tongues. So the point is that if you have preaching something different than the Bible, so and when the Bible said not everybody speak in tongues and you emphasize that the everybody has to speak in tongues may I say this you are false teachers and you are teaching the false doctrine and we have to repent and so we follow the Bible. Today we have seen charismatic movement has gone too far. And go ahead. And it is violated so many biblical principles. And we need to uh, correct 
that problems. And how can we correct? By study the scripture. And follow exactly what the Bible said. Yes, we do sympathize them. And we love them. But yet, if you see they're, they're wrong, and you don't show them they're wrong, may I say this? You really don't love them. I love them. And I, 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 I have faith that the, I may be offended them. But I have to tell them the truth. Because they may dislike me. But the chances may be because I'm telling the truth. And I'm preaching the truth to them. They may be correct. And then build up a close relationship according to the scripture. And doing, doing God's will in the rest of their lives. And so which way you want to go? To endorse their wrongdoing or love them and to show that they're wrong. And so they will be able to have the chance to correct. Which way you want to go? Let's pray. Father, we are praying that thou will give us a courage. And so we'll choose the, the difficult way, but the yet right way. Correction and rebuking may not be uh, easy to take. And yet, it is the right way to do. I pray, Father, that will give us a courageous and boldness. So we will be able to stay with the truth and walk in truth and showing and preaching the truth to the, to the whole world. And also pray that the, our, our charismatic brothers, uh, that one day they will turn uh, away from their wrongdoings and then follow God's will. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.